Now, if you're any familiar with the photography world, you all know of a cult following that basically developed behind the Ricoh GR series, especially the GR3 and GR3X, known as uh, the dream of many street photographers. We're not really looking at that today. I ain't got that kind of money. It goes for like a, a grand or more on markets now. No way. But we are looking at a possible budget version of it. Also from Ricoh, actually. Uh, so these are the Ricoh CX-1 and Ricoh CX-5. Straddling the line between a Digicam and they have as much a penchant for street photography as their more developed brothers with some really nice zoom versatility as well. So I'm gonna just show you the kind of pictures that you can get out of these. Unlike the Canon Digicams I showed in the last video, watch it if you haven't, the Ricoh CX series, it doesn't really try to do any fancy curvy design contoured stuff, which was the hot stuff back in like the late 2000s and the early 2010s. No, 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 you're just getting this black little soapbox that takes pictures. And to be honest, I, I, I love it. You, you can see how the modern Ricoh GR series continues this sort of very utilitarian aesthetic, albeit probably with a bit more flair. My CX-1, I got basically, as you can see, it's kind of in brand new condition, really. Like, there's barely any cosmetic scratches at all. However, the display here, when I got it, it didn't peel like this, but after a few days, it started developing these nasty, uh, peeling kind of messiness but hey when you take the pictures it looks absolutely all right there's no problem with that still perfectly usable and i really like that the plastic used on the cx1 here it's it's really it feels mad but it's also hefty and it, it doesn't feel hollow right it feels chunky and premium meanwhile on the cx5 here yeah they they had a downgrade in materials like the plastic here feels different it feels hollow and it's shiny too so yeah not my not a fan also they remove the grip surface with the cx1 you have a little bit of a groove here with the cx5 yeah this little bar thing it doesn't really do anything so mm. and uh for my cx5 the display it's a bit pure but the problem you clear it has like this really bad peeling part here. It doesn't affect your pictures, but uh, it's a bit of a patch, but hey, I can still use it, so no problem. If we're purely going by design though, the CX-1 is the definite winner for me. Okay, so how do these Ricos fare better for street photography compared to other Digicams? In other words, why is it that these cameras let me take shots that otherwise would not have happened if I had brought another camera. Well, it sure ain't the sensor in these because both the CX-1 and CX-5 sport a 1 over 2.3 inch CMOS sensor, so it's not even the much touted CCD magic sensors that everyone's raving about. And it's also not the resolution because the CX-1 has 9 megapixels, the CX-5 ups it to 10, which is still not a lot to uh, crop, but still it, it works. The shots that come out these cameras, they're not the most vintage looking things either. It just kind of looks like a typical digital camera shot. But there is a notable spec though, and that's going to be how much these cameras can zoom. Like the CX-1, it gets up to 200 millimeters in focal length. And a CX-5, it has 300 millimeters. They really wanted to tout that, so they write like seven times and 10 times optical zoom on this part here. So they really want to op advertise the zoom capability here. And it really is versatile. But what really helps the street photography endeavors here are the software that Ricoh built to work with these lenses. These cameras, are made for a photographer who wants a secondary carry and it doesn't 
try too hard to appeal to casual users. Thanks to that, you have a stepped zoom system that snaps to popular photography focal lengths, you know, 35 millimeter, 50, 75, all that stuff. It, I wish all Digicams did this. And this menu UI, it's operated mainly by the joystick. You have this really really nice menu system where all the items in the menu are just straight to the point and you you get the hang of it and you can really just like wave the joystick around like a wand and you'll dial in your settings just right you also have a certain degree of control over your image with contrast sharpness and color depth which is basically saturation so you can tune it up or down depending on your tastes. And then where's no, when there's no time to fiddle, these Ricos also have these two my camera modes, you know, my one, my two, which gives you two preset modes for you to play around with that you can save to and just get your settings in right there. And yes, it will remember the default focal length that you've set it to as well. So for example, if I wanted 50 millimeters to be my default focal length, you can save that into the custom settings and it'll remember it as well. Like, you really don't have to zoom in all the time because for me, I shoot with longer focal lengths. So saving it to 50 or 75 is actually a good thing for me. So I really like that. Okay, so here's how I have this, uh, set up the custom settings for my photography needs. First, in the custom settings one mode, this will be my standard color mode, uh, but I do tune the picture a little bit so that the contrast, sharpness, and color depth is dialed back a few steps. On the CX-5, you can also turn off or at least reduce to a minimum the noise reduction and make sure to do that because uh, yeah, the Smooth Imaging Engine 4, the processor in this camera, it basically turns everything above ISO 400 into watercolor mush. Um, I set my default focal length to 50 millimeters, but usually in practice, I will zoom in a bit more to like 85 millimeters or something. The second custom mode I leave for black and white photography because, oh boy, the black and white output from these cameras are awesome. Check this out. The black and white output from these Ricoh CXs have a slightly punchy contrast to them, but not too much that it becomes a caricature of itself. And the way the metering works, the way they measure exposure in the black and white mode comes out just right. So I pretty much don't have to do any editing at all to get some really great pictures, aside from maybe raising the brightness up a little bit and a bit more contrast in the grain, you know? With the CX-5, you can also reduce the noise reduction and it creates a really organic, fine grain to really add personality to the black and white pics as well. And beyond that, these cameras are just speedy. Their startup times are pretty eh, as you've seen. Not the fastest for sure, but once they're up and running, their zippy little things snap and save pictures quite quickly compared to the old Canons where it took a while to save and with CHDK it just got worse. And it allows you to fire off shot after shot, which is the difference between getting the moment and missing it in street photography. And then there's the little touches, like the picture tally counter when you turn off the camera, which gives you the amount of pics you took on that day. Every time I see that tally go up, I, I just want to turn the camera back on and, and keep shooting. Just one more picture before I end the day and that one more becomes two, two becomes three. You get the idea. So now that I've waxed lyrical about these Rico CXs, are they really beating the Rico GR series? Especially the GR3 and 3X? Uh, no, no, not at all. You wish. Look, these are still cheap old digicams with small sensors that really struggle in low light and in high ISO conditions. Coupled with the really narrow aperture of the lenses, I think with the CX-1 you're getting like the lowest aperture is like 3.3. With CX-5 it's up to like 3.5. So you're really not gonna get any kind of, you know, depth of field that the, uh, the APS-C size sensor of the GR3 can give you. 
the lack of manual controls also means that you're relying on the camera to take pictures for you to make pictures for you and when it decides on a slow shutter speed especially at night you're not gonna be getting sharp pictures for sure even if these have some kind of stabilization built into them it doesn't work that great however what the Rico CXs have is that it has the versatility of a long zoom lens which is a plus for me since again I tend to shoot my subjects a bit far away anyways so the 28 and 40 millimeter equivalent lenses on the GR free and free X actually are too wide for my taste and I probably wouldn't get as great pictures on those as I did on these CX's also the GR lenses are prime lenses so they're not resumable really as well so you lack a little bit of versatility there of course you make it up for optical quality but still you know again shooting far away subjects and I think that at the end of the day the Ricoh CX's still have that Ricoh DNA that makes it so special they're pretty no nonsense they have rich photography centric settings that you can mess around with and they're like there's just these fast little pocket rockets that you can just totally want to have with you for daily snapshots because they're just so nippy and quick if you can find these for below i'd say 40 to 50 bucks i think you're getting a bargain you ain't getting a rico gr for that price that's for sure and if the digicam craze is anything to go by it is only a matter of time until these cameras get discovered and their price is just absolutely gouged so get in quickly before they get hyped to the heavens oh my god all right that's it more digicam vids to come Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. This is Lumerion signing off.